played to him. Ravinelli spots out. Emerson! Welcome back to the Bora Breakdown podcast, the season review show with Johnny Dana and Tom. We have the Bora podcast that gives you the ins, the outs, the ups, the downs of Middlesbrough Football Club. And well, Bora wrapped up the championship campaign with a 3-0 defeat at home to relegated Wickham Wanderers, seeing Bora finish 10th in the championship table. Dana, I want to kick things off with you. Um, Neil Warnock said in his post-match press conference that he didn't want to get too downbeat about the result yesterday, but how much of a disappointing display was it? Yeah, it was a disappointing display. and I was a little bit annoyed with what Neil Warnock said after the game because for him to come out and say that he doesn't think the fans will be too bothered about that game is such a swing and a miss of a statement because all I saw on social media, be it Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, even the forums as well, was criticism and heavy criticism and quite rightly so because we were absolutely dire yesterday from start to finish and then you know for him to come out and say that 10th is a is a fabulous finish because we didn't really have a striker we did you signed him and he never played him well i'll come on i'll come on to tuber in, in, in a second and also he, he let go of of brit and, and fletcher as well um but tom Bore didn't actually register a shot on target yesterday um, against a side that has the second worst defence in the league, conceding 69 goals all season. Only Huddersfield have conceded more with 71 um, and they appreciate they did lose 7-0 to Norwich a few weeks back, obviously pushing that up. Um, but did it really magnify Borough's weaknesses yesterday? Yeah, it was awful, wasn't it? Like It, it never looked like we had, had a plan going forwards. Um, well, it, a, a plan B, because uh, our, our plan seemed to be to just pump it forwards to Yannick and and what more, and then wonder why the, they weren't able to do anything with it. But it didn't. It was like the definition of insanity. We just kept trying the same thing over and over again, and it just wasn't working. And you know, Wickham defended against it well. Um, you know, th- their centre halves like we're, we're cutting out crosses. Like every, every time I looked up from from switching between the the derby game on my phone to the, to the match, it was like oh, we just had another cross cut out. Like that seemed to be our only. Uh, our only option going forwards, and it just wasn't working. Well, the crossing that you mentioned, the crossing, and we'll come on to that a little bit later on because it's it, we've got a nice little trend around that from from this season and why maybe crossing probably isn't the best way to go for for Borough this year. But then uh, um, on his post match press conference, and you you mentioned it there. Um, one of mentioned that Borough having a striker all season, and I'll I'll throw some stats your way. Um, Thirty games for Duncan Watmore scored nine goals with one assist. Tuba um had five goals and two assists from thirty eight games. Britt had just had five goals, no assists, and Fletcher had two goals and one assist from the twelve games. If you want to put Corburn in there as well, he scored one in, in, in three games. But the strikers are there. In comparison to what we want to say, Ivan Tony who scored thirty one goals. You've got uh, uh Armstrong there, Blackburn who scored twenty eight goals this season. I think um, Warnock's been a, a bit harsh on saying that he didn't have a striker. He he did sign one, of course. You know, he let over t- the other two go. I was pretty sure because they were out of contracts. But we did have strikers there. But a bit harsh what, from what you were saying. Yeah, I, I must admit, I'm a bit sick of managers trying to pull wool over the fans' eyes and trying to take us as mugs, really. I mean, Neil Warnock has had the strikers. He's just not been able to get a tune out of them. And funnily enough, um, when I tweeted about Famara Jeju and everyone started dragging me on Twitter about it, um, everyone was saying, well, trust Neil Warnock. But over the last, I think, 12 or 13 years, he's had three strikers that have hit um, double figures. Callum Patterson, Kenneth Sohor, Luciano Becchio at Leeds. So he's not got a great track record with strikers. So for him to sort of try to to put all the blame on, on them, I think is unfair. Uh, we don't play to a certain way that we get the best out of them, um, and it's it's difficult because they're not target men. They're they're men that, that you know they're strikers that want to get the ball played in behind, and they want the ball to feet, and you know they want to play on the shoulder, and we're pinging balls forward into the channels. It's just not the style of player that I think is is right for those types of players. And um, yeah, he can come out and say that he hasn't had a striker all he wants. He has. He signed yeah. one, so. Yeah. You know, well, it was his first choice, apparently on number one choice. It's yeah, I'm 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 a little bit tired of hearing 
go sound bites from managers, if I'm honest. It's interesting as well because um, he, he, did, he did say that, oh, I'm not going to watch, I'm no longer going to sign a player that I've no longer, I, I haven't seen in person. Um, and obviously, him yeah, in that recruitment team for you know, so the signing of Tuba. Well, if Tuba wasn't the right fit, then why'd you bring him in? Um, you know, you, you did have Britton Fletcher there, of course, and yeah, they are out of contract, but you could always revisit it in the in the in the January if we needed to. We also brought in Duncan Watmore there. We didn't have to probably bring Tuba in if we didn't want to. We paid two million pounds for him, and then to slag him off for not fitting your system when you've bought him, it's a bit a bit confusing and. We'll come on to the the, the striker's strengths, Tom. Um, the, Dana alluded to it there. The, the the stats there around nine goals for Duncan Watmore and um, being Borough's top goal scorer this season. Um, did we play the strengths at all? No, not not particularly. I think you you have to look at um, the three strikers that we had and what we tried to to do. Britt, I think, since Pulis has got better at being kind of the hold up striker because he's kind of been forced to, but it's still not his strength. Like, his strength was the same as kind of Jordan Rhodes, his poacher in, in the box. Ashley Fletcher, again, uh, improved since we bought him. Um, started kind of being a more physical presence up front, who, who had a, quite a bit of pace uh, about him as well, and we didn't really use that. Tuber, obviously, we didn't use that. And then, what more, even though he's our top scorer, he hasn't been playing striker for... Like a lot, a lot of the season, like fair enough, he has been in the probably in the last few matches, but it, there has been games where he's been playing winger and and uh, and stuff because we can all remember that um, uh, well goal of goal of the month. I don't know if it was goal of the season where he you know channeled his inner Messi and took everyone on and curled one into the far corner. Um, you know he, he's created chances for himself um, rather than the other three strikers where they've had to rely on the midfield or wingers to create chances for them that, that never come because like we've said time and time again on here they're just not tall enough to win the crosses that or, or long balls forward that are, are being put in and then we won't then our players are like wondering why we're not creating anything so no I, I don't think we're we're uh, playing to anyone's strengths at all at the moment so I think it just kind of shows what we need to do in, in the summer Um, we, we need players I mean I know we were in for Keith Moore at the start of the year. I do think in this team he probably would have got in into double digits for um for goals purely based on his form this season and the type of play we've tried to play. Um, it's just w- what we were trying to do didn't suit any of the strikers at the club. Well, what would be the the, the best way to play at these forwards then? Because it it's all well and good saying that we're not. Well, we're not playing the strengths, the long balls. And I agree, I've got a stat with the long ball uh, coming up next. But, well, I can tell you now, we borough were in the top five uh, teams with the most long balls this season. We played over a 1,000 crosses this year, um, and we don't really have much to show for it. The, the w- With that in mind, what with Borough playing the amount of long balls the way they do, do you think that's help or hindering the sides? Then also, what do you think we should do to... To play at those strengths, probably hindering, um, because because like Dennis said uh, before, like we're we're trying to play long balls into the channels, and there's there's never anyone there, or we're playing crosses into the box, and then wondering why our strikers who aren't prolific from the air aren't winning these headers and, and putting them in. I'd be interested to see, like I mean, it's a hypothetical, but Britt Fletcher and Akpom, I'd be interested to see how many goals they would have got in the team that went up, uh, you know, five years ago the other day. Um, because there were a lot of um goals in in that season where it was kind of like you know slid in through balls to to the strikers on on a plate really, and yeah. e- even in the playoff season. So I'd be interested to kind of see, uh, hypothetically how many goals they'd have got in that system. Um, but it, I think it's clear that in this system it just wasn't ever going to work for them. Yeah, I, I don't think it was going to work. Going to work for them. And I think it comes down to a couple of things. You know, appreciate. We weren't playing to their strengths, and then also were the players doing enough to get into those positions to to try and get the end of the crosses. You know what I mean? I think what we've said on the we said ho- all on the whole season that Borough strikers don't gamble. They don't. They're not proactive in the box. It's very static, and um, they're not willing to to put the head where it hurts, and and that can be quite frustrating as as, as a fan. But also f- for Borough, we have to, we we do need to try and give these players all the tools to succeed and I don't think we did uh, enough for that but Dana um, I just want to hear your opinion on it do you think the the long balls really do hinder this side given that given that Warnock's main style is long ball football defensive yeah. counter attack it does yeah I mean 
we just don't we haven't had the strikers for it and yeah, I understand. Obviously, he went in for Kiefer Murray. He went in for Yaya Snogo. I think we've been linked with Robert Glatzel. <laughs> All those players. And then we brought Akpom in, who I think in a better system, in a in a system that suits him more, he, we, we could get more out of him. But the, the way that we play, it just doesn't suit the players that we have. And I think just from an outsider's perspective, if you've got those options, surely you should assess those options and try to play to the strengths of them rather than to just sort of keep your style of play and fit players around that because we, I mean, Dun for Duncan Watmore to come in and to outscore all the players that were there several months before him, I mean, it's good for Watmore, but what does that say about the, the you know, the strikers, the rest of the team? It's it's not it's not solely on them, Um but it's something that needs to be addressed and we need to bring in the right options in the summer. Yeah, well, we have to address it and we'll come out a little, little bit later on. But in terms of the crossing side of things, we've got a good, a good little stat we've pulled. So um, in, in crossing into the box, so in those games, statistically, Borough crossed the ball into the box more than they did uh, when they actually won. So 11 of our 18 wins this year were when we crossed the ball 18 times or less. Um, more than that. <laughs> we lost. <laughs> um, <laughs> so 11, 11 of our wins this season, so 11 or 18 wins this season, have all came from games where we haven't been crossing the ball in the box. So it comes back to that question. Why are we still crossing the ball in the box when it's not really our strength, if you know what I mean? So mm. it, it's, it, it's an interesting route that we're going down. Um, but how would you assess the Borough's forward play, Dana, um, in, in those games? Because we've kind of shown there... The winds of when the winds have happened where we haven't really crossed it, but can they do more? Yeah, we we're just too predictable. I think when we get the ball out wide, sometimes the deliveries are good. It's a mixture of like you said and like we said on the podcast all season, the lack of movement, the lack of gambling, f you know, following up parried shots. I mean, when Chu Bratpom did that against Barnsley, everyone was losing their minds because it just never happens, does it? You never see a, a Boris striker follow up on a parried shot and score from it. Um, but I think also the type of crosses is, is quite important as well. Um, against Rotherham, we had a lot of luck from those low balls cut back and I can only assume that we did that because we had a man advantage because we weren't doing that before Matt Cox got sent off and we haven't done it since really. So it's probably, it's like the, I think it's a type of crosses as well as a, a lack of gambling um, in the box. But we, we, we are, we're just predictable. We're too predictable, which is why I think teams let us cross because we don't have a Charlie White and Aidan McGee partnership, for example. Um, obviously, we've been linked with White, who's scored a lot of head goals in League One this season. We don't have that type of player. Mm. It's interesting you're saying that teams allow us to cross. So these crosses have all came from when Middlesbrough went behind in, in games. And Dana, um, before I move on to more of Middlesbrough's possession style and how that trend filters in in the Borough's defeats this season. Uh, Borough went behind, I think it was for the 26th time. Uh, if you have to fact check me there, is that, is that right? That is right, yeah. 26th time. So Borough went behind for the 26th time in the 40, 46 games. Um, why do you think then, Dan, that Borough had all of these slow starts and kept going behind in games? It screams to me a lack of authority in the team. And you, you spot on there, 26 times we've we've conceded the first goal. Out of those 26 games, we've lost 17 of them. And to delve a little bit deeper into Borough's slow starts, only Bristol City have conceded more goals in the first 15 minutes than us. They've conceded 12, we've conceded 10 in the first quarter of a game. And I think it just shows a lack of leadership. I mean, we put a tweet out this week, last week or something, uh, say, or asking, um, what do you like about this Borough team? And a few people came back and commented, well, the, the togetherness, but I don't see it. I don't see it in the team. And I don't know whether it's because the standards are quite high from the Italk Ranker days, where I think that's when we did have the, the, the togetherness and you, you could never knock that. Um, but I think we do have a lack of uh, a lack of leaders. I don't think the team are quite a unit yet. I mean, we've still got a lot of uh, gaps to be to be plugged. Um, and if the team were together, they'd have a leader. They'd, they'd have um, the authority. And I don't think we'd be having these slow starts. So I think... I think it's the, the the lack of leaders that I personally think has contributed to Boris slow starts this season. Would you say motivation's one? Potentially, but I mean, surely is, is one not getting enough out the team? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I mean, surely you would think that Neil Warnock would, but that's a massive. <laughs> it's been a massive problem uh, for us this season. The the starts that we've had, 
Um, I think there's been multiple times this season where Warnock's come out in the press and said that we'll try to sort of almost blame the players, but surely he has to look at himself as well. If he's not getting a tune out the strikers, for example, if we still have this problem and this reoccurring trend of conceding the first goal, you, you know, you, you, you're right to ask the question, is it down to motivation? And that's why I think we don't have a so-called team yet. I just, you know, we're not a million miles away. I'm not saying the players hate each other or anything, but I just don't think that we have a, a unit. I think there's a nucleus there, though. Yeah, I, mean, I, 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 think, I agree I think with the that, nucleus yeah. is there. It's just building on top of that. And I think we do need eight or nine signings to probably put that right. Um, but in terms of the slow starts, Tom, do you think there is there anything more to it? You know, motivation can is would is Warnock's tactics wrong? Is, is, is he too reactionary? Is he not getting the that first half an hour right? And I appreciate football is a very unpredictable game. Anything can happen. But in terms of style, uh, tactically, is he getting it right in, in those games? Or was he getting it right that se- this season? I think we, we touched on it last week. And I, I think my opinion on it is still the, the same. That um, we're not raring to go as, as soon as we, we get out. I think tactically, you know, th- th- there's nothing kind of too wrong with, with how we're, we're set up. Um, you know, we've got the players in the right positions there to to prevent people scoring in the first fifteen minutes. But I think it just comes down to to motivation and and people not being kind of uh, ready to go as soon as they they step out onto the pitch. Yeah, I think I think you are right. If they're not where, where to go, um, but we'll, I'll, I want to mainly focus on the on the formation element and appreciate the formation. It it does help, of course, and. But the way that Borough would switch from a three at the back where they looked very comfortable and they were able to dictate the play, they were able to find angles. So when we were playing that long ball, you know, we were able to create, when we were playing across the three, the, the centre halves would be able to create an angle, play that direct, directional, direct, di- I can't say the word, what's it called? Uh, diagonal, diagonal ball. <laughs> diagonal ball. <laughs> um, uh, across, and we were able to, you know, create chances and get the second ball and, and become quite resilient going forward. And it was where Mills were, were quite. We're quite positive at the start of the season, you know. We, I think that, that first twenty-three games, I think we picked up thirty-six points, and we looked fairly solid. We're touch, we're in touch and distance of the playoffs, and you know, we look. We I think we conceded fifteen goals at that time as well, and we looked really balanced. But then we switched to a four, and then then that's where the problems started to to, to lie for Borough. And I feel like it's why the the slump, the so-called slump in the in, in the second half of the season, really started to 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 come in, but. Another trend that I, I found from from Borough this season, and we spoke about it previously, but uh, was when we get to when we when we lose games. And Middlesbrough's uh, have lost thirteen out of eighteen games is when they had more possession of the ball. I appreciate when we have lost games, uh, when we had lesser possession. It was against the likes of Swansea. It was the likes of uh, Brentford. It was against, against teams that we we kind of knew we wouldn't have the majority of the ball. Um, but it's quite clear um, we, we went behind uh, in twelve of those thirteen defeats as well. So is it a clear tactic from the teams, Tom, that give Borough the ball and when the opposition are ahead because they're not going to break us down? Yeah, because we, we always revert back to the same strategy every time of trying to get it out wide and cross it in. The amount of games this season, like I, I can't remember the the exact amount, but it's like we'll go behind, then we'll start crossing in and you know they'll all just crowd the box with their massive centre-backs and cutting out and they seem very comfortable in doing that, but it's it's something we revert back to every time, and it, it never really works. So I I can't really blame the other teams for kind of figuring that out and exploiting it because it's just like like we've said before, it's it's too predictable what we're gonna do. Mm, do you think we just lack that that player who can take a game by scruff of the neck and create those chances? Like a Gaston Romero, which was a perfect example into the promotion season. Yeah, we were we were up and we we're up we we're up there. Teams would come come to the side and sit. And w- the, to be fair, I'm not surprised a lot more teams did it now, but I don't think our quality is there yet to for teams to do that. Um, but with Gaston Ramirez, he was able to find a needle in a haystack, wasn't he? And able to create a chance out of nothing. But do you think Borough severely lack that? Yeah. Hence why the, the crossing out wide. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's what we tried to address in, in January with the signings of uh, Cabano and, and Balassi. Um, not that I think they've not been great for us because I think they have had flashes of, of brilliance and you know we've said before I'd love to see Balassi back next season don't think there's any chance of getting Cabano back um, if there is hopefully you can get on Spencer's scooter and <laughs> get up from, from London to join us but <laughs> I can't believe that I kind of want to know what type of scooter is it is it one of those ones where it's like a uh, 
Is it a mobility? Like, what type of... Th- no, in in my like mind, mo- it's one of them, like, trick ones, you know, when people go up, up and down the, the <laughs> half pipes and do flips yeah. and stuff. Yeah, fair enough. Can you imagine if Jed Spence actually had a mobility scooter or something? He just, he just taking the train every day because he couldn't be bothered to drive. <laughs> didn't um, oh. didn't uh, Triori used to have one? He did, yeah, he yeah. did, yeah, I remember. Uh, it was, he did he? T- yeah, oh, he you, did, yeah, there's it, a photo of him, isn't there? Yeah, Yeah. see that? I mean, shout out to Jed for getting the scooter, but I mean, <laughs> it's uh, it, I mean, such a strange injury to have, isn't it? I feel like someone's telling a bit of a white line. But then again, though, like, <laughs> why even bring why even bring Jed Spence into that equation? You know what I mean? Like, he, you could have just said, oh, yeah, he, he had a hamstring strain, that, that was it, so he couldn't play. You don't, you don't have to say, oh, yeah, well, actually... He fell off a scooter. Um, it was actually Jed Spencer's, by the way, just to put a bit more fuel on Jed Spencer's fire at the minute, fans. You know what I mean? I want to see that CCTV footage. Yeah, so do I. I feel like Mill will be released, shouldn't they? Yeah, it's on you being for next week. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need the cash to get the fund our... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to find our, uh, How much did they give on you being framed again? Is yeah. it like 25 Two, quid? 250 quid. Is it? Oh, 25. Trying to fall off your chair down and see if we can <laughs> yeah, get 250 sure. quid. <laughs> yeah. um, but in, ter- in terms of uh, the crossing and stuff like that, Tom, I, I, I agree with you. We, we don't have the quality there. Teams are happy to sit in uh, because they know fine well that we're not going to create a clear quick chance. Uh, we're not playing to our strengths and it's very Neil Warnock-esque to to play the long ball and try and win the second ball. But when you knock, when you get the ball in the mixer like that, you know you, you, you expect something to drop, <laughs> don't you? Hence why a lot of teams tend to cross and go more direct when they go behind. Um, but the problem we've got there is we don't since we're not gambling, we're not trying to pick up those second balls. It's just and the crossing's relatively quite poor. It's getting headed out, reset, Borough launch the ball forward again, comes back, and then we won't create a clear cut chance. And I think that's where it's been really frustrating for Borough this year. But then we've got another trend. Um, before I move into that post Christmas slump, and it was from Dave McNally who, who sent us it, and he said, "What do the bottom seven teams have in common? We've lost against all of them. Uh, who was the only team we did the double over, and it was Coventry City. Um, so, what does Warnock need to do to get consistency next year, Dana? Um, well, to be fair, it's quite clear why you didn't get the playoffs because I mean, you've lost against <laughs> you lost against those seven teams, but carry on. Yeah, I mean. I he needs to he needs to fill the squad out. He needs to get that leadership. Um, again, I think the the lack of consistency can probably go down to a lack of authority in the team because I genuinely don't think that if we had and I, I always say this on the podcast, but because Grant Ledbetter was such an uh, exemplary leader, um, he's really set a standard, hasn't he? And even despite the fact that I think his legs were going and obviously he's since dropped down in position, albeit yeah, he, he went to Sunderland. It was always going to happen with his um, boyhood club, but he just had. He just, he, you know, he never got too ahead of himself and he never got too low either. And I think we need somebody like that. I, I, I do still think that we've got players that could sort of be born into that sort of role. I think um, Grant Hall and Sam Morsey. But I do think we just need someone that is maybe a little bit experienced, a little bit, um, well, I suppose those two players are, are experienced as well, but we need more experience. And I think we need, again, we just need leadership. Yeah, you don't you don't have to be experienced to be a good lady, you know. That's it's true. Ben Gibson uh, was a fan example of that. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think you don't you don't need uh, age to be fully experienced. I think if you're good enough, you can show the qualities uh, which a good lead, a leader has. And that's so you can you can have many leaders. And I said it on the last podcast, you can have someone who gives you eight or nine out of ten every single week. That is uh, someone who's a performing leader. You can have someone in the change room who gets the lads. Uh, like up for it, uh, like someone who's more vocal, and then you could have someone who is just like more of like a connector where they have a really good emotional intelligence and they're able to get the best out of everyone by adapting their personality towards them. And I think that do Borough have that? I don't know. I, I physically don't know. I think Neil Warnock has a specific style of getting the best out of the players. It'd be very interesting to see what he does in the next couple of days where he's chatting to all the players individually. It'd be interesting how he, how he approaches that, what players are going to have a future, what don't. Um, but in terms of that leadership, I, I don't know who is a leader. Maybe you've got like Grant Hall, you've probably got Housen, Morsey. Is that it? Dale Fry, maybe. Um, All right, sound. Uh, what do you? <laughs> do you not remember when John from Wilkins came to the armband? I, 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 I
went over your head there, didn't it? I know it did. But I'm like, I'm thinking like, if so, if I know we're live on Red Army's Facebook page you now, so if anyone can think of leaders apart from the the three or four I've just mentioned, chuck them in the comments because I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm struggling. <laughs> well, I think it's because we've got quite, we've got some quite young players that are, are quite quiet. You know, um, Dyke Steel, for example, I think he's a very just a very quiet. Can have a calm influence. Yeah, it's true, but I do think we need a, I do think we need a, a, a shouter, a gobshite, a, a maniac, a psycho. I think we need someone that can <sighs> just. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna what? say it. Lee Catmull type player. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I agree. I think uh, they're hard to find. I guess. Um, I do agree. I don't think they necessarily need to be experienced, but we also do need experience. So kill two bo- birds with one stone with that, but. Yeah, I think we do need we need experience, we need leadership, and yeah. I don't know. You, you might see Paddy McNair step up next season. Yeah, well, Luke's just commented on on, on the feed and said Paddy McNair is, is is a leader as well, so they could have that. He did. He's actually the only Borough player that played all forty six games this year as well. So mm. not some more than that, con- considering he was playing for <coughs> for Ireland every mm. other week as well. Um, sorry, Northern Ireland, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah Northern, Northern Ireland. Ireland. <laughs> um, I was going to say <laughs> one um one position. I think we we could have a. Uh, we don't have a leader currently in, but I'd like to see us have a leader there next season as goalkeeper. We spoke about it before um, in terms of like an experienced keeper organising the defence. I don't think Bettinelli did that. Um, and I, I thought Archer was starting to, to do it, but we, we've we seen some unfortunate uh, defender mishaps in, in the last couple of, uh, in the last few games really. So maybe we need someone a little bit stronger uh in, in terms of a personality in, in goal as well um but y- you know at that point you're, you're looking for someone like a, a Demi or Schwartz or Shea Given just someone experienced who can tell everyone where they need to be and kind of organize that defense a lot better than it has been organized this season yeah I mean using your voice is the best power you can you can have on a football pitch but it was interesting you said like the last few games, Tom, and it, it leads quite nicely to to the, the post Christmas slump and and and, and, the, and the signings in the January window. So, in the twenty twenty one season, Bora in the top half of the table for thirty eight consecutive weeks from game week eight to forty six, with an average league position of ninth. However, there was a slight change in results um, from the first twenty three games to the last. So the first twenty three games, Bora won ten, drawn six, uh, drawn six, lost six, scored twenty eight goals and conceded twenty one. And with 36 points uh, made. And then from 24 to 46, Borough had won 8, drawn 4, lost 12, um, scored 27, so 1 worse off. But then look at this, uh, 32 goals conceded um, and 26 points gained. Uh, Borough was 7th after the win against Wickham in the January. Um, and we did bring in the signings of Cabano, Balassi, Mendes, Lang at that time before the, this so-called slump happened, Dana. Um, did you expect for a kick on in getting the playoffs? I mean, given those signs were quite exciting, it seemed to be a very, very good window for Bora. Yeah, I did, and I still, <laughs> I still can't put my hand on, uh, put my finger on why Bora have slumped. I think there's a, a multitude of potential reasons. I know that a couple of players got COVID. I think in maybe December, January, that could have taken a lot out of them. I think maybe a lack of a proper pre-season potentially or a proper break. Um, going into pre-season could have been uh, a factor as well, but also injuries because um, there's, I don't, there's a stat. Our most important players t- statistically are Dyke Steel, Tav and Fry um, in terms of points per match. And yeah, it's about 1.59, isn't it? I think you can throw yeah. Morsey in the mixer as well. Um, I think he's on 1.56, I think. Yeah, Dyke Steel and Tav 1.59 and Fry 1.56, so... <coughs> you know, important players there that have, that have been missing, and I think Fly, uh, Fly. <laughs> Dale Fly, not missing, <laughs> Fry's influence on the defence um, has been really important this season, and he's been missed, Tav's been missed, Dice still has been missed as well, he's really come into his own under Neil Warnock, so that's had an impact as well. And I think maybe Neil Warnock has had too many options, Dawn. Too many. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Bora breakdown. Bingo. <laughs> Get your pens out. <laughs> <laughs> it was always going to happen, wasn't it? But yeah, I think he. I think he has had maybe too many, and it's diverted him away from like that three-five-two to accommodate yeah. like Sebastian and Cabano, and and them two have been good. I've been really impressed with them two. Unfortunately for Mendes, like he hasn't. We haven't really seen much of him, have we? Yeah, he's got a lovely chip, and then. 
that that yeah tri- disappeared in, uh, in thin air. <laughs> um, but yeah, in terms of the, the signings, Cabano, Balassi, Tom, how would would you like to keep any of them for next year? Uh, yeah, well, ideally, you'd want to keep both of them. But like I say, I, I don't <coughs> think there's any chance we're keeping Cabano, especially if Fulham go down. Um, Balassi, free transfer, you could potentially make that work. Oh, we Yannick? Come on. <laughs> yeah, are you listening? <laughs> I know, I know you're listening, Yannick. <laughs> yeah, please do. Please do. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you'd maybe uh, you, you'd want to keep both of them ideally, but I mean, Yannick's probably the more realistic of the two. You'd maybe even want to keep Mendes Lang. Um, you know, if if you can get a a full season out of him, playing you know back to his best, if you can have a proper pre season, he, he he could uh, he could be pretty important for us. Um, but yeah, the the. Looking at them on paper, you'd ideally want to keep all of them, but mm. there's on there's some who are more realistic than others, though. Yeah, I think yeah, I think you're absolutely spawned. There's obviously there's going to be links to it, and we'll come on to it a little bit later on with the questions. Um, but Boris form never picked up, even with those signings coming in. We all thought at that end of that January window, I was like, ooh, you never know, playoffs <laughs> potentially. Even though we've only been in it twice for the whole season, everyone was saying to me, oh Johnny, you're going to get a tattoo, aren't you? Because we're going to be in the playoff <laughs> places, we're going to get promoted, and I was like, yeah. Well, actually, I feel a little bit worried now because the signings. You thought, hey, you know what, but I've done some, done some very, very good here, but appreciate that it wasn't a huge drop off, and I appreciate that a lot of fans are saying it was a, it was a massive drop off. We slumped, we kind of like started over the line. That the attitude hasn't been right since Christmas, and to be fair, the, you know, the results. We appreciate we are ten points worse off than we were at the start of the season. But why? Why do you think that is, Dan? Do you think it was injuries? Do you think Borough got found out? Do you think that Warren was not getting the most out of the players? Why? Why do you think we we kind of stuttered over the line in the end? Um, I think, like I said, I think it's a mix. I'll also throw in, I, I say the injuries to to Tav, uh, Fry and Dykesteel, but you've got to try and get the best out of the alternatives as well and I don't think that that's quite been achieved so I don't know it's I'd love to know what people think is the main reason I think for me the main reason I think it is the injuries to be fair but then like I said you could easily say that Warnock hasn't got the best out of the alternatives um, and the alternative group um but yeah, it's it's unfortunate because I think January you look at that window and you think, right, we we look good and we were going into it thinking, right, we're going to kick on now and we never did. And um, I think there's a multitude of factors to it, definitely. Yeah, there absolutely is. Um, and to be fair, we I think it it wasn't a it wasn't a significant drop. I just think that Borough pretty much leveled out to what we expect them to be. I think. Neil Warnock did a great job this year to get us to mid-table from, from where we were in the previous season. Um, I think that he's brought the best out of a, f- a, f- a fair few players. I think he deserves a lot of credit for bringing the best out of Baller, Dyke, Steele, McNa- uh, McNa- McNair. <laughs> what um, is going on? Was it, was it we drunk? <laughs> well, to be fair, I did have a big night last <laughs> night. So it was... Uh, yeah, you went for a swift one. Uh, I went so. for a swift one, turned into a swift five and swift six, and then the next thing I know, I'm playing beer pong, and, and I've came on with Shawford. Um, so uh, <laughs> true story. <laughs> yeah, true story. Uh, so it's um, I can't lost my point now. <laughs> I lost my point. Um, but what I was going to say is that he's bringing the best out of certain players. Um, and the reason why he's bringing the best out is he's able to motivate them to some extent. And he deserves a lot of credit for what he's done to get us to mid table. And mid table is pretty much where we should have been anywhere this season. I think it's just because that we we were like thirty eight weeks consecutively in the top ten. I think it's always going to like go, oh, what if, what if we could, we're only like three points off here, we're only like, you know, we just need to beat so-and-so. And when you look at the the season, probably like the last five or six games, or you know, maybe seven or eight games, um, we were actually parallel. For, we were pretty much on track from hitting the, hitting the exact same numbers than we were um, at the start of the season to towards the end of the season. And it's like those last seven or eight games where we're playing like the, the better teams or the teams in and around us, it's where we massively dropped off. And they're not just significantly dropped off, like we just didn't show up. And that kind of, it, it pretty much proved that we weren't good enough. And I think that's why we had that slump towards the end of the season. It's why fans get frustrated. But I think the fa- I think the players were just like, oh, well, these are better than us. Like, we're, we're not going to, we're not going to get playoffs this season. And then when your manager's saying we're not going to get playoffs this season and being very vocal about it, 
it's going to have a domino effect. But in terms of the influential players, and I've already mentioned them there, like Tav, Dykesville, Fry, um, Morsey as well, with that average 1.59 per game. Um, it is pretty much a nucleus, isn't it, Dana, for, for Borough to, to kick on next season and you can build a team around them. Yeah, and I think it it's a decent nucleus as well. I mean, I, I like Morsey, I like Hall as well. I think he's been a, a good signing. We just need to build on it. I'm I'm interested to know where Warnock will put Paddy McNair next season because... <laughs> Up for sale. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking earlier on in the campaign, he's better in defence. But I do think he's better in defence in a back three. But in a back four, I think he needs to be put in midfield. And I do think his second half of the season has gone under the radar a little bit. I think he's been poor the second half of the season. I've got a full list here of mistakes that have been made in the games. And a lot of them, McNair has had a part to play in it. Um, getting caught wrong side at, at Sheffield Wednesday. Um, Bristol City, McNair stepping out, leaving Fry Explores. I know that it's incredibly harsh because he has had a good season overall. But the question has to be called of next season, where does he play? If we play with a four-man midf- uh, four defence, I think he needs to be played midfield for me. But if it's a three, I would play him in, in that three. Yeah, I think he's better in a three as well. I think... That when you when you do play a three, you can rotate your centre halves um, to want to go for to to play out really. I think when you've got the likes of Fry and you've got the likes of McNair, you've got two good ball playing centre halves there, and you mm. can you can really allow them going to midfield. Appreciate Fry doesn't probably have the pace that McNair does, but you know they're both technically very very good. So and they can Grant Hall is as well. So they can cre- they can create chances through the midfield and play through teams like we did at the start of the season. I thought it was more beneficial, but there's a couple of uh, comments there from women about the, the, the slump and the people were saying that <laughs> Leon said uh, a goalkeeper with arms would have helped <laughs> us a lot this season. Um, Luke's saying that we sold our best keep, uh, uh, best goalkeeper in Ainsley Pairs, which I'm not going to lie, Luke, I disagree with. Um, and Leon, again, um, they said about Pairs there as well. Um, but basically people were saying that we're just not good enough and the, the, the goalkeepers were were to blame really for for the the slump and I mean you you can't really blame them with some of the clangers that we've dropped and and the goalkeeping stats of of Bettinelli and Archer they haven't really been too impressive um but going forward Tom our goals con- uh, goal contributions this year George Savile was our top player with ten and um, with six goals and f- uh, four assists Watmore had nine goals and one assist Paddy had nine uh, with two goals and seven assists Neymar have had eight. There were three and five, and then Tav and Tuba both had seven, uh, three and four, and five and two. Um, I feel like we should chat about chat about George Savile a little bit because he's someone that's went under the radar. He's someone that hasn't really been getting all the headlines at all. Um, do you think he's had a, a very good season this year under Neil Ward? I'd say average, to be fair, but I, f- I think you could say that for for quite a few players in, in the team. Um, Obviously, you said there he's went under the radar and he has had the uh, the most goal contributions. But looking at that list, it's not really hard to to get to the top. Um, <laughs> I mean, when when we signed him, you know, and we gone from from Millwall, I was questioning then kind of what what kind of player that George we'd Sabal signed. Seven million. <laughs> yeah, I was I was wondering what he was going to bring to to the centre midfield because you know we we've been. I want to say spoiled in centre midfield in in recent years, but that's like discounting uh, Pulis era, Woodgate era, etc. Um, lo- looking back at like when we've had like Ledbetter and Clayton, they've maybe set a high standard for for centre midfield, e- even for sure, and and Durin when when we had them. Um, so it, it it was wondering what what kind of player we'd actually sign with him. I'm still kind of wondering now. Like he just seems like. I don't want to say average midfielder, but done nothing. Nothing really stands out about him uh, for me in centre midfield. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being six or seven out of ten every week, is there? Well, yeah, but when you're in a midfield where it's kind of a very similar style of player across the three, you do need someone who's gonna who's gonna stand out. And yeah, it's it's just kind of seeing what exactly the three of them bring to the team. Yeah. Um, not to say they bring nothing or anything, but you, you need someone to stand out and and be able to link up the midfield to, to the strikers, which I think other than Tav, not many of them actually do. Yeah, so you say, you're saying that Borough needs some diversity in the midfield next yeah. year? Yeah, well, that, well that, that's absolutely, yeah. I think when, when you look at the likes of Savile, 
Um, I think he he's a very tidy player. I think he's he, he does bring a lot to the to the table in terms of connecting the midfield to the defence. But it's just that that little bit that little bit more quality. I feel like you need. And but to be fair, I've I've been happy with George Savile this year. I think that's, he was one of my <laughs> players un- to watch this year. I yeah, think yeah, I, yeah. I, I did say surprise so, package. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm gonna defend him here, Tom. I'm gonna <laughs> say that George Savile is the best thing since sliced <laughs> 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 uh, uh, But no, I think I think he had a good season. But I I absolutely see your point in terms of we we do need that we we do need that additional quality we just need that that number 10 that number 10 mm. you've got Tav there and I think Tav is probably a, a better wide player than probably what uh, more of a central player and I think that if we have that if we have that number 10 maybe next year you can maybe put Savile in that number 10 role you could you, you did play there for, for Millwall and that's where we got the best out of him we haven't played him in the number 10 since <laughs> so, <laughs> so maybe that's probably a role that we should potentially look at um, but let's move on to questions. Uh, we've got a, fa- uh, a fair few to go through. Um, we'll start off with Marcus, and he's at the Borough Pessimist. Um, and he says, who would you be sad to lose from the team that played on Saturday? For me, it was none of them. So, Dana, do you, uh, any players that you'd, you'd be sad to miss? I'd say Hall, McNair, Balassi. Um, I forgot, I'm forgetting a team now. What more? Probably okay. them. I mean, to be fair, Dan, I'm not going to lie here. It was a game that you could easily forget in the happy, <laughs> isn't it? So <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> I yeah. won't blame you on that one. Um, but next question is from Ben in Strickland. He says, is there any point in having this coaching staff for one more season if we are to finish mid-table? Tom, do you want to take it? Is there any point? Well, definitely not. We're going to finish mid-table, but that's obviously not what the aim is for, for next year. Um, you know, Warnock's a manager who's got, what, 12 promotions under his belt, mm-hmm. and he, he's looking... To, to mount a challenge for, for next season. I think a lot of people are kind of disappointed with this season because we've always come close to the playoff places and then dropped off and then come close and then dropped off again. But we were all saying at the end of last season, you know, top half or, or mid-table would be a massive improvement on, on last year and we'd all take it. And it's exactly what we've got. We, we said it a few podcasts ago, what would be like an on-par performance for, for this season. I think this is it and... You know, he, he's done a good job to to get us here, and then it's just time to push on next season. Obviously, if we finish mid table next season, is a bit of a failure. Um, but it's interesting. I, th- I think if he uh, if he's been given assurances that he can sign the players he wants for next year and build the team he wants, you know, there's no reason why we can't be challenging. So uh, I'd say that you know, you know, absolutely you, keep him next season. Do you think it's an actual failure if we do finish mid table next year? Yeah. Why? Um, well, he's he's making noises now, saying he he wants to to mount a promotion challenge next season. He's saying he wants to sign eight or nine players. If we do go go ahead and sign eight or nine players for next season, then we we'll look. You know, we we've got the expectation there. Uh, if we do sign them, that okay, this is Warnock's team now. He's got exactly what he needs to take us to to the promotion challenge, at the very least playoffs. If we finish mid table next season, then yeah, I'd say that is a failure. Interesting. Do you think he's uh he's doing a bit of a gibbo there and saying he wants to smash the league? Is it is he is he starting to like plant the seeds there? Is he trying to get expectations a little bit high? I appreciate from a marketing perspective, you don't want to go and say, Well, we're aiming for mid table this year, guys, so buckle up. Um <laughs> Yeah, so I was a bit cynical thinking it might just be a season ticket drive like, but well, is this squad good enough? Uh, I think right now with no and with the teams that are coming down as well that could potentially be challenging, I think it's gonna be tough next season in the championship. I mean, I know we we have our season uh, preview show, obviously in the, in, the, in a few weeks' time, anyway, probably in a couple months' time. But like right now, I'm like, ugh. like when the teams are coming down, and if they keep managers, if Jukanovic goes to uh, Sheffield United as well, and see the teams are not going to go up as well. Oh God, it's like I I, pre- I appreciate it. it might be a failure if we don't get playoffs, but realistically, is playoffs even? Like gonna happen? <laughs> I think with the current squad, no. But like I say, if he if he gets the players he wants, and you know he's got no excuses for next season, he's built yeah. the team he wants to to build for this promotion yeah. challenge. Then I'd say that is a failure. Well, Junior Hoyle on a free Tom, and we we seen about it in the car, and I could I could not believe. By the way, he's only thirty. I know he's been around since two thousand. Well, I mean, he did get stuck in that hole, so I think his um his age just stopped in it for a bit. In that hole, what? Yeah, you remember uh, when he slid at QPR and he got stuck in that camera pit? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's so... 
You need to get some of those shortbreads down your Johnny. I think so, yeah. I, I think I do. I'm, I'm looking at them now and I'm just thinking, oh, I, f- I fancy a, 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 a safe way. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast fancy a safe way shortbread. Stolen from the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I don't, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't, I don't think Hollywood would be a decent sign. To be honest, I mean, you might prove me wrong, but for me, I, I think it's. Uh, mm, I well, mean, we haven't been named with him yet. I mean, it's it's. He I, I um. The, 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 uh, <laughs> <laughs> back to you, Jeff, in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, to be fair, I wouldn't be surprised. And Sam Klugus is on a free as well, and he <laughs> was like Mabora last year, so he could be a sign in that. Uh, that Bora bring in and it leads quite nice on the next question from Patrick and he says do you think Warnock will be backed to get the 10 players he needs to improve on the 10th position uh, this year do you think he will be backed do you think he will get those 8 to 10 players that he, he, he wants I think he'll be backed whether or not he'll get them is a different debate <laughs> he probably won't I mean we, we saw how much of a struggle it was last season where I think it was just crickets really wasn't there for, for a while until who was it that we was it Bettinelli that we, I can't remember who we signed first. Hall, Hall, I think. Oh, was it? Yeah. We, we signed Grant Hall after like a few days, didn't we? And then it just went. Yeah. Then it went. It, then it went dead, and there was tumbleweed. So I think it is going to be a, a struggle. There are some somewhat decent uh, free transfers. I think James Collins of, of Luton would be a, a decent signing. Um, just to throw one out there, but yeah, I think he'll be backed. Whether or not he will get them is um, a different conversation. Yeah, well, well, it, hey, you can't knock the recruitment team. You know, you can't, you can't knock him. Warnock's at the wheel now. He's he said he knows them all. He knows he's, he's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to ident- identify all of the players that we need. He um, wanted to sign Yaya Sanogo. Hey, not, not <laughs> Warnock, kno- Warnock knows best, so it, I can't really. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, but <laughs> it, it, I don't know. It, it, it's interesting because if he does bring in the ten players that he wants, give some deals. Like Tom said, if we get 10th position in, into so-called failure, then we're stuck with Neil Warnock plays and we have to move to the next project. And it leads quite nicely to the, the, the next question from Charlie. He says, do you think the director of football will be introduced after Warnock leaves? Uh, do you think, and also, do you think the fans will help or hinder us next season? So do you think after Warnock maybe does leave next year, do you think he's going to move upstairs um, where to, to where Gibson is and have that, like, that connect between the manager and the... I don't know, maybe. I mean, we, we've talked about it for a few years. We talked about that when Pulis was manager, didn't we? And that didn't happen as well, probably thankfully. But uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, I can't see it happening. Um, not not Warnock anyway. Um, I think after this this job, I think he's done. I know he's been saying that for years, but I, I think after, after this one, if, if he can get us promoted and go out on a high, I think he, he probably would stay at managers in the Premier League, but... If if he doesn't, I reckon he's he'd be done. Um, Warnock moving up, Blackwell taking over. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. I think that might happen. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it could happen. Yeah, I think. Well, I think. Well, but not an hour track record. It'd be Stewie Down and who's next manager? <laughs> yeah, probably. Well, admit, that, you know what? You're not probably far off to be honest because it, we're, we're probably due a manager with no experience again. So. Um, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But do you think, in terms of the the fans, uh, Tom, do you think they'll help or hinder us next season? I think. Do you think Warnock was a bit lucky that fans weren't there for like the last few games? Probably the last few games. Yeah, I think um, start of the season it probably would have been quite a positive atmosphere, especially after uh, how he en- ended last season. I think he had uh, pretty, much, roll, pretty yeah. much everyone behind him, and everyone was horny for Warnie. Mm-hmm. But. Um, Last few games, yeah, I saw, I saw quite a few tweets yesterday which were saying the players like be, should be thankful that no fans were in the stadium against Wickham because they would have got some abuse for that. Um, Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Verbal or physical? <laughs> <laughs> End of season pitch invasion for the wrong reasons. But, <laughs> but um, no, I, th- I think that, it, that whole... The atmosphere yesterday, I don't think it would have been as bad, but remember when we went to Barnsley like right before COVID it and mm, that that was rough. So that guy was having a, a heated discussion with Justed as he was walking off the pitch and stuff oh. like that. Like Old Clothes always a bad place to go when you're not playing well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember yeah. having with Mowbray as well. Oh, yeah. Mowbray, was, <coughs> Mo- Mowbray was sad. I, I think yeah. I, that was just a sad time that fans were getting frustrated, but with with Woodgate there, uh, like yeah, we were 
very very poor that day yeah. wasn't it and like the only yeah. highlight of the day yeah. was probably singing sweet caroline and then also starting Neo's magic. starting to new year's magic in in the in that concourse place where, where was the it the sport the sports like? center place yeah we started and it was just going off like 25 minutes and that was probably the highlight of our day apart from that i, I I can't remember a thing. I can only I think I can only remember like Ravel Morrison just spraying a ball thirty yards and then that was about it. <laughs> but good times. And the highlight of my day was the Tyson Fury fight afterwards. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, God, man, I mean, that's a massive throwback. Yeah, I mean, sorry, Dana, we're just like we're going on a massive yeah. tangent. You're you're, you're sat there like ah yeah yeah, yeah I was yeah. Uh, yeah good aye, aye. Aye, aye, good good shot there. <laughs> I mean, aye. <laughs> 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 right, that's what a massive giveaway for us, I guess. But um. <laughs> Uh, we'll move on to the next question, uh, we'll, and it's from Phil, and he says, if you're a free agent or a player with options on options down on the table, <laughs> um, <laughs> what is it about Borough that... What was in the question? Um, what, <laughs> what it? No, I'll put it in. Oh. Uh, what, <laughs> what is it about Borough that will persuade you to come? Uh, I don't think we're an attractive option, and even less so with Warnock in charge. So if you're a player with options down, uh, would you like to come to Borough? Do you think Middlesbrough are an attractive outfit? Not really. <laughs> no, because, I mean, we do have a bit of a disadvantage because players seem to hate <laughs> coming up north and the smoke and satanic kills. But I don't know. For certain players, I think one, it will be a pull, but I think it'll mainly be players that have played under him before, which is why I wouldn't be surprised to see Kadeem Harris, Junior Hoylet sign, other players as well. You know, Nathaniel Mendes has been brought in. Um, <clears throat> funnily enough, I, s- I heard yesterday that Barry Bannon played under Warnock at Palace and didn't give him a chance. I think we can uh, rule that one out. I know he's a free agent, but um, I do think Warnock is a pull for certain players. But again, like I said last season on the preview podcast, we don't have a long-term plan. So is that a an off-putting factor for players? I'm not so sure. It might be. Mm, well, uh, an- another question we've got is this: is if you could sign only sign one player this summer, uh, which would it be? A target man, a midfield general, um, a strong centre half, or a dependable goalkeeper? Um, Tom, what would out of the four, what would you prefer? I mean, you'd probably have to pick a target man because we've got no one else there apparently. <laughs> 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 the striker you doesn't. Hey, you don't need a striker. Look at Man City. They don't play with a striker. I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll go with um, Sam Morsi up front. Um, <laughs> Hold the ball up. <laughs> Mor- Morsi and Watmore as a front two. Um, yeah, I, I think ideally you need all of those, but uh, yeah, if you had to pick one at the moment based on our style of play, it'd probably have to be a target man. I'd go goalkeeper. Honestly, I think I think we're desperate, we're absolutely desperate for a goalkeeper. I mean, I, I don't think Enzi Perez was 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 right, and I don't even mean I think maybe this season would have been a good chance for Enzi Perez <coughs> to come in. Um, he just needed time away, but. I mean, like he's he's went now, and at the time when he came in under Woodgate, I didn't think he was good enough um, to to nail down that position for a prolonged period of time. Um, I don't think Sol Brin's ready at all. I, I'll be very, very no disrespect to Sol, but I, I, I can't see him in a Borough shirt. I can't see him as being Borough's number one goalkeeper. Um, yeah. And it's not not his fault at all. Um, we we don't say that with a lot of our youth keepers. Though, well, that's we? what I mean. That's that's what I was coming to. Like by Jason Steele, who wasn't really particularly great um i can't really think of a, a goalkeeper that's actually stood out from like who you know came through the yeah, academy I, I think they all have parallels with how they come through because they come through Brad and show sure they're, they're like a quite, quite a decent shot stopper you know jones turnbull pairs steel p- get people behind them thinking this guy's reflexes are classic and you know he, he's a decent shot stopper but they don't communicate with the defense they're not a commanding yeah. presence in the box and long term, that that wears off, and you know they they have to be replaced with someone more experienced in the long run. Mm, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, they have to get replaced, and that's why I mean with like Sol Brin, like he need, he probably needs time away, and then when he comes back, who's Boris? Who's Boris keeper going to be? And as he nailed it down, and that's where it becomes really difficult for these type of players, and they're coming through. I think goalkeeper is probably the hardest position to come to come through at, and. Um, but yeah, I hope he proves me wrong. But you know, at this moment, I don't think I can see him in a Borussia. Um, so that's why I'm picking goalkeeper. Um, but one final question before I move into our our Borussia breakdown awards, and uh, it's from Paulie Mackey says, "Why is Warnock reluctant to give the kids a chance when we had nothing to play for? And is this the sign he will go for more seniors senior pros next season, like Karanka used to?" Uh, Dana, do you know? I mean, the, there was that little room from uh on on Talk Sport that. 
Borough would he would get a bonus if Mills were finished top ten. So <laughs> what he would? Uh, Warnock, <coughs> yeah. Um, well, I don't know. I mean, it was it was a bit of a shame to see the under twenty threes lose and the under eighteens lose because we pulled players out of those squads to give them two minutes. <laughs> Um, which was a bit of a shame. And uh, Jack Robertson and, and Hayden Hackney came on, obviously. Um, towards the end, Mali <coughs> did Corburn come on? Yeah, he got a little yeah, bit he did, longer. Didn't he? <coughs> I think by that point, I was watching Sheffield <laughs> and Derby, <laughs> to be honest. But um, I do think he'll go with with senior pros. But much depends on the transfer window because if he doesn't bring in enough players and we do have a lack of depth, then he's probably going to have to integrate the young players. But um, I think there's, there might be a certain reluctance to, to play these young players because they might not be ready. They might need a loan spell. Um, and y- you know what Borough fans can be like with young players where we, we build them up to bring them right back down to to earth. So I don't know. I mean, I would like to see more players play next season. I'd like to serve Mali, Corb- well, I said Corburn go out to go out on loan, but, you know, Mali... Um, Hackney maybe stay in the in the under twenty threes and get a couple of games, but I don't know. I mean, he's he's played a, a few this season. I I feel like he will go for senior pros because he needs the experience. Yeah, uh, I think I think you will as well. So let's move on. Um, let's talk about our overall season season opinions, and then we'll go on to the borough breakdown awards, which is my favourite part of the show. Um, so start of the season predictions. We've pretty much, it may, we all had our, diff- <coughs> and I appreciate you're going to have to be Elliot for this. Um, so sorry. Let's <laughs> drink. Uh, <laughs> get a bottle of red wine. <laughs> um, but start of season predictions, do you think Borough achieved what you set out for them? Dinner? Well, I said mid-table, but I also said, and this is to quote myself, um, I want to look back at the end of the season and know that we've taken significant steps forward as a team. And have we? I don't think we have. Why? I think we've taken more of a diagonal rather than a step forward, even maybe maybe even a slight st- side step, maybe. That's why I say diagonal, because I don't think we haven't moved or progressed at all. I think there's been certain players that have really come into their own this season. The nucleus of the team, like you said, is good and can be built on, but we still can't score goals. Yes, we have conceded a lot less than last season, but that's not to say that the defence has covered themselves in glory this season, because they've conceded some incredibly sloppy goals. Um, we still don't have uh, a lot of leaders in the team and the goalkeeping situation hasn't been sorted so that's why I say I don't think we've taken significant steps forward and uh, we haven't gone backwards but I, I don't think that we've progressed as much as I wanted us to or I hoped we would. Okay yeah no, I agree with you on that one I agree with you I think we haven't we ha- we haven't made significant steps, but I do think we've made positive steps um, in the right direction. I think this year was always going to be some sort of transitional period. I, I don't think we're always in a transitional period. Oh, I mean, transitional period since bloody two thousand and seven. Um, I thought you were going to say two thousand and three. No, well, was very we, disappointed. Hey, we, we were going, we were, we were thriving in two thousand and three, Dana. Thriving. Well, no, I wasn't born. Uh, oh yeah, you weren't born. Jeremy yeah. pinging free kicks into the top corner. Oh like. yeah, mate, those were the days. Remember going to uh, like you know Ellen Rhodes where we Janino scoring up the screen, and then that Jeremy chip as well, wasn't it? And then uh, you know Carlin Cup European tour. God, those were the days, don't they? Those were the days. Take me back. Take me back to good old Ethel. But Tom, your season predictions. Do you think Bora achieved what you set out for them to achieve? Yeah, probably. Um, I agree with what what Dana just said. I was thinking about it there. I think we've we've taken positive steps forward in some areas, but some areas we probably went backwards. Um, and that that that's not from signing the wrong players necessarily. It, it you know it's down to a multitude of reasons. I think you know striker we we went backwards because of obviously the the attitude of of the players that have left probably. Um, you know not wanting to to play from like January onwards goalkeeper and said we went backwards but then we've had positive steps forward in, in other areas like you know ball with dyke steel fry midfield um, as well midfield has had a lot of goals yeah mm-hmm. you know tav's tav's played well when when he's <laughs> been in um so i don't think we're like well we're probably eight or nine players off next season like like warnock said but um that's m- mainly kind of depth having having those options to kind of rotate and you know if we do get injuries like we've had second half of this season to actually have some decent options to bring in um 
I was I didn't say Don there. Uh, <laughs> I was you're, thinking you're that. Gonna, you're going to. You're going to. I was you. thinking that. Yeah, I didn't think of this. Uh, too slow. But, um, yeah, we. I'd say we move forward in some areas this season, just backwards in others. So it needs to be kind of a, a full push forward on for, for next season. Yeah, I, th- I think it's 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 very easy to say that we've we've went back in, in certain parts. I think I agree with you. There's certain positions which have probably regressed rather than than, than progressed. And I think my prediction at the start of the year was mid table. I would be I was I was be very very surprised if we got anywhere near the playoffs. And that's why I put the the tattoo betters because I just didn't have a, a chance in hell that we were going to get promoted. And um, I think. I also said that I want Millsborough to be the hardest working team and the hardest working team in the in the, <laughs> in the league. They're a great set of lads, these lads. <laughs> um, sorry, man, the Tony Peel just came out and just um, well, yeah. I just want us to be a really hard work inside, horrible to play against. And and to be fair, we did that at time at the start of the season. I thought, yeah, you know, we're picking up points here. We're gonna probably finish about mid table, and we look relatively safe. And I didn't want us to worry about getting relegated at all this year. And I hope and I was hoping that was just a blip, and I think it is. Uh, I think Warnock has done a, a reasonable job in terms of uh, turning us around slightly, made made us more difficult to beat. I think there's been some good moments this year. I think that it's been relatively okay, and throughout, I I always thought mid table would be would be perfect for us. Um, I just think that the way we're positioning everything now is that. We s- we were so close to hitting that playoff spot. Yeah, it's why fans get frustrated. It's because they've had that that, that little that little glimmer of, of hope, um, and it's just been banished in the way that like, we've like approached last few games. I think that's why people are getting a bit of like bad taste in the mouth. Um, but if you look across the whole season, I think it's been relatively positive. I think we've improved. Um, but next year is where we have to, like you were saying earlier, Tom. I think we do have to to kick on now i think if, if 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 he's serious about wanting to get promotion and whether it's actually achievable then we have to really kick on we have to have a fantastic summer um to be in and around the playoffs next year because if we have an average summer or anything less than that we'll win mid table and that's where my prediction will probably be but in terms of neil warnock he is happy for one more year you're you still horny for one either perry is Oh, anyone? No, so I guess I'll tell that as a no. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy with uh, with Warner for another you, year. You're just just happy for Warner, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'm <laughs> mediocre for for Warnie, like five out of ten for Warner. But uh, yeah, I, I think, like I said earlier, he's got the record number of promotions under his belt. If he's seriously aiming for for promotion next year, I reckon we'll we'll get close to it. Um, you know, providing he gets everyone who wants in the summer, there's obviously no excuses. It's gonna be his team next year. Um, well, it's his team this year, really, in here, <laughs> a lot of it. But yeah, yeah. yeah I, I suppose ju- ju- during last summer, he didn't get every player that that he mm. wanted. There were still some excuses there. I think that we missed out on some top targets, and yeah. you know, finances did all those back a bit. So, I, I reckon if if he is back during the summer, um. You know, brings in these eight or nine players. We've got the the depth options done. Um, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, then yeah, I, I, I'm happy for him to stay another year and challenge for it. Yeah, um, a couple of comments before I come to your opinion, Dana. Uh, Pete has said that if if he if uh, if he would come, why don't we go for Frank Lampard if Warnie doesn't stay? Um, so I can't see Frank Lampard coming. Didn't up. I call? Jason Tinsel the Frank Lampard of the championship because he's out of his depth. You know what I think? Mind you, that was I, in the context I of being a Chelsea think, manager. I personally think that the Frank Lampard was... A, it, the, it, I think you've disrespected Frank Lampard there. No, it was <laughs> it was in the Premier League that I said he was out of his depth because I think he was. I don't think he was ready for that Chelsea job whatsoever. I think he deserves a lot of respect for what he did, you know. I do. I thought he, he did a cracking job. A cracking job at Chelsea. Um, but, yeah, it's... Um, yeah, it, uh, in terms of Warnock... Are you happy one more year? Are you all right for Warney? Are you not happy for Warney? Are you, I don't know. I can't think of any more words. <laughs> I wouldn't say, I don't know if happy is the right word, p- because personally I don't really enjoy the style of play that his teams have. Um, but it is what it is, isn't it? I kind of have to put up with it because he's the manager for next season, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah, uh, it's, you don't sound overly pleased. <laughs> well, you know, I d- I'm I'm just like you. Like I said, I want to see pove- uh, possession-based teams. And I, I sit in the car every time I see a long ball punted forward, I die a little bit inside because I think Tony Pulis has scarred me. So 
Yeah, yeah but if you think about yeah. that, though, like if you think of the managers we probably we've had as 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 of late, Pulis, Warnock, um, like, and obviously probably Woodgate as well, where we we played a lot of counter attacking sa- uh, style, but it wasn't really a long ball, but. We Middlesbrough have played a defensive style of football for many, many years. There's only mm. really that three-year period under Cranker where we haven't really... Oh, uh, and maybe we more Bray a little bit. We um, were defensive under Cranka though, weren't we? I mean, I, 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 I don't... We got I called don't, defensive a lot, but it was I, I can't solid at the back and possession play. I, yeah, I can't see being defensive when you hold like 60-70% of the ball. Do you know what I mean? I, I mm. can't see that. I feel like you, you're controlling and you're just being patient with it. I don't think that's defensive. I just think that with that ta- at that time... Which is the opposite to what this Borough se- team is, where we'll get the ball and we'll we'll hit it hopefully in the channels and we'll try and get the ball get we'll probably reset and then we'll go again and we'll try and break with, with pace. I think with Karangi, we'll just get the ball, wait, just play it around. That's why I, I really liked Adam Forshaw at the time is because he was just able to just connect the dots at times. Mm. And um, I think that with with him it was just wait until the op- the opening is. Teams aren't gonna be so solid for 90 minutes hence why it kind of works at times yeah. i appreciate it didn't work at Birmingham because really you never had the players fully behind him to be on a three when you've got like harley dean there and who's who's openly slagged her off for like three or four seasons and then you become the manager and he's probably sl- he's probably slagged him off with did did Karanka get rid of um the duke dukovic no no he's still there he's still there no i mean when he was oh, at, when dukovic was at borough did was it Karanka that got rid of him because i can't i don't it, know what the timeline uh, was it was, was it? it? Um, I'm trying to think cause he s- signed for about a million, didn't he? Under yeah. Mowbray. He was only there for like a season or two. But at that time, though, Lucas Jukovic was only, what, 21, 22? He was yeah. very, very young, wasn't he? Very young centre forward. I, I seem to remember we, we had like um, Curtis Main still in the team when Karanka took over. Oh, we did. So we did. I, I, I feel like Jukovic might have still been there. I feel like Kai Kamara was there as well. and he was Kai Kamara, mm. Curtis Mann. Uh, well, Carriol was there. Yeah, Carriol, Lukas Jukovic. Uh, I, st- I feel like Karanka did get rid of Emnes. Jukovic. Yeah. Emnes was there. Project Emnes. Yeah, he was, he was oh, there. Jesus. Yeah, and then we got red. Had that lethal uh, partnership with Emnes and Ledesma for some games <laughs> under... And the Karanga. <laughs> the good old glory. Danny Graham. Yeah, Danny Graham. The good, the good old glory days, eh? The good old glory days. But in terms of one more year of Warnock, I'm happy with it. Got a good record. I'm probably not horny for Warnie anymore. I'm kind of like mediocre for Warnie. I'm happy. <laughs> but if he gets, if he, if, I think if he, he has to start the season very well, though. I think if, if, if he starts the season poor, and the way the bad taste is now with fans, I think it's going to be a very, very difficult job for him. And then we'll come, we'll have like a Pulis type not pure respect, tight revolt, where people are getting the bed sheets saying, pure this out. But, I <laughs> mean... <bed> <laughs> it, well, it was. It uh, was yeah. Um, so, it's... Yeah, I think he has to start the season very, very well. If he doesn't, it could be a bit of a... a 1-0 it, loss to Saltash United incoming. Yeah, well, there we go. <laughs> um, but let's do the Borough Breakdown Awards, my favourite part of the show. Um, so, go, guys, who is your player of the season? For me, I'm going to say Dill Fry. Um because I know what some of the other categories are and the it was between two players for, for this one but end of last season we were saying um, you know Dale Fry is this a season for him to to kick on and I said it could be the same as like what Karanka had with Ayala and Gibson just need the right manager to get the best out of him and I think he has kicked on I think Warnock has got the best out of Dale Fry I think it's a massive improvement on, on last year and uh, yeah for me he's, he's definitely up there Okay, uh, Dale Fly for you then. Uh, You're the one that said that first. I, right? I said it many podcasts ago, and it's it's kept. It's, I'm just going. <laughs> Dale Fly. Um, but how has that caught two of us out now? Uh, Dana, who are you going um, for? Tav, I think Tav for me. I think he's been key to us, and similarly with Fry, um, when he's not been in the team, we've missed him. Mm. So th- there's no one else like Tav in our team. I don't think. So for me, I think he's he's our player, my well, my player of the year. Interesting. I'm gonna go with. I'm stuck between three. Yeah, I'm stuck with Dykesdale, McNair, and Sam Morsey. Um, I feel like Dykesdale, the way Dykesdale's been this year, I just think that he, and the way how poor, how poor we are when he's not in the team, I feel like you can't like you can't go past him. I think don't get me wrong. I think Paddy McNair's had a fantastic season. He's played every minute. He's been influential for a lot of things um but i just think 
when we's not when he's not played, we've really missed him. So I'm gonna go with Anthony Dykesdale as my player of the season. Well, do you want to see what we said at the beginning of the season? It's I, it's I, decent for you. I, what? You, I think, you said Tav. <laughs> I I think I said about Dykesdale that I was he had to really perform this year, didn't I? I can't remember, but you said Tav for player of the year. I said Ashley Fletcher. <laughs> <laughs> Elliot said Brit, so those two went incredibly well. Oh, well, I'll take Tav. I'll take Tav any day of the week. Mm. Um, then we'll go for. Should we go for what? What have you got in your? In, did we say surprise player of the season? Should we go for surprise player of the season? For the review, or yeah, do you want for, me to? We'll do. <laughs> do, you want we'll, me to let's do your preview. For, <laughs> let's let's do let's do what we said. Right. So, so uh, sorry, Tom. You're going to be Elliot for a second here. Elliot said Sam Stubbs. <laughs> I can't believe I said that. <laughs> 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 you said um, Savile slash Marcus Brown, and then I said Marcus Brown. You know so what? You've covered yourself in glory. Me and Elliot have not. You know what? I think Marcus Brown would have been excellent this year if he didn't have the injuries. He looked really sharp yeah, and good. Yeah, mightily and I unlucky, wasn't he? He was. Yeah, I only played like five, six games this year, didn't he? Mm. Got injured again. So I hope he has a really good season next year if he's if he's able to break through again. Um, and then I had Georgie Savile as as me uh, as me star and. Yeah, good old Georgie yeah. boy. Good old Georgie boy. Most goal contributions. There you go. Um, but yeah, it, it was your surprise player of the season then, Tom? For me, I'd say Bowler. Okay. Um, I wasn't expecting him to, to push on as, as, as well as he has done this season. I remember seeing uh, some pretty bad games from him last season and thinking, what, who have we signed here? Because he, he's rubbish, but... <laughs> <laughs> we decided to be rubbish. <laughs> but uh, no, th- this year he, he's completely turned it around. Uh, he's probably one of my uh, you know favorite players to kind of see on the on the team sheet, um, especially after after a couple of years under um, you know Pulis where we were playing centre backs at, at full back. It's nice to have backs in centre mid, centre backs and out and out full back now. Um, and I think he's done really well this season. And plus he's got a hell of a shot on him as well. He does. The, uh, the Roberto Carlos of the team. The Roberto Carlos <laughs> in, in, in Mark Baller. Dan, have you got a surprise player? I would I would agree with Tommy. I think Mark Baller's really um, stepped up. But th- there's other players that have as well. I think Fry, I've criticised him before, but he's been one of our best performers this season. Uh, Dyke still as well. There's a few, in, to be fair. But actually, I'm going to change it. I'm going to go Watmore. Okay. Because I did not expect Watmore to hit the ground running like he has. And I think he's got the more... I think he's the most... Techni- well, statistically, the most clinical in terms of his shots... Um, and goal conversion. So, uh, yeah, I, th- I, w- I would go Duncan Watmore. What more? what more could you want? What more could you want? We've got Mark Ball. I'm going to go with Paddy McNair as my surprise of the season. Um, I didn't expect him to be so good at centre half. Um, and, mm. and the way that he's he's been able to create chances from there. And I think it's a shame that we we reverted back to a four because um, I yeah. feel like it hindered him quite a bit. But when we were playing that three and he was able to creep into the midfield and create chances for us, I just thought he was absolutely brilliant. And you know, playing what every single minute of the season, pretty much this year, mm. and I think he's been fantastic. Um, so he's been my surprise player. Um, I didn't because I just didn't expect him to be so good at centre half. <laughs> he's a jack of all trades, is Paddy McNair. Um, and then we'll go for sign of the season. So, who do you think Bora's best sign has been this year? For me, this was Watmore, and he was the other player uh, alongside Dale Fry for me for um player of the season um like dinner i didn't expect too much of him when when he did sign um i thought he'd be a good option to have out wide um i just didn't think he was gonna have the impact that he did um but yeah like i said earlier when he was channeling his in the messy against uh huddersfield mm-hmm. um yeah. that that goal was immense and i, I think he's played to great this season so yeah. for me definitely time of the season uh okay so the same <coughs> dinner. yeah i would give that to what more as well um I think he's been he's been fantastic and always gives hundred percent. You know he's he's one of those runners. I think he was nicknamed the road runner at Sunderland, and you can see why. So I, yeah, I would say I would say Dunk on Watmore for that one as well. Hat trick for Big Dunk. I'm I'm going for Watmore as well. I think he's to get him on a free, and in the way he's played this year and the, the amount of effort he puts in each game. Yeah, absolutely sign of the season. But I do want to give a notable mention to Sam Morsey. Mm. Fantastic. I'm I'm all aboard the, the Sam Morsey train, by the way. I'm I'm on board. I'm the driver. I I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm t- he's taking us off, I'm telling you. <laughs> um but not like in talk about captains and stuff for next year, like why not Sam Morsey? Why mm. not? Like he he is the, the shit house uh, of, of midfielders and I feel like 
I don't know. What, we just look so much better than him in the team. Yeah, uh, he's a shit house, but he's also a very good player as well. He's like, act- he's, you know, he, he's got that aggression, but he's also a, a really good midfielder. Yeah. All, uh, so if anyone wants to join me on the Sam Morsey train, you can, yeah, you're happy to join. Like um, I'm the driver. all aboard, all aboard the <laughs> Sam Morsey train. Yeah, um, and then probably uh, I kind of want to give a shout out to Balassi a little bit because um, statistically he was our most effective player in the second half of the season. Um, so shout out to Balassi and I'll buy a Korean chips if <laughs> if you ever come back to Teesside. Um, or unless you want to do this into your best pals, we both will. Yeah, I mean, I know, and then even even Marzi, even even like you tweet the other day, didn't he? Mm. Marzi saying that he was the best centre centre defensive man in the world. Well, it's just the truth, really, isn't it? Better um, than Kante. Yeah, I mean, who's Kante? You know what I mean? When you got Sam Marzi, all the board, the all the board, the Marzi train. Um, the Marzi Express. <laughs> the Marzi Express, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, what is your favourite moment of the season? We'll do a podcast, a favourite podcast one. But what has been your favourite moment of the bo- of the season for Borough this year? Uh, for me, and I'm going to sound like an idiot here because I can't remember the exact score, but when we played Millwall at home, I can't remember if that was 3-0 or 4-1. 3-0. 3-0, right, because for me, that, that was just a great day. It was, um, you know, I went around my uncles to watch it. We watched the match, had a few cans. Uh, a few tennies. <laughs> had a swift one. I, I went for a swift one. <laughs> um, and then it was the Anthony Joshua fight afterwards. Uh, we had... Um, uh, Chinese Korean chips, so uh, can't, can't hey, beat it. What, what a night, yeah! Chip. What a night. So yeah, that that was it for me. It's just uh, probably the standout day of the season. <laughs> <laughs> Going for a swift one, then having a Chinese, love it. I mean, the swift, the swift one has to start. We're gonna have to make it a thing now. The swift one, <laughs> yeah. it, it's becoming a thing. Um, what's in our favourite moment? Have we got? A, have you got one about favourite or best game this season? Up. Well, uh, yeah, that was going to be the next question, yeah. Oh, because I don't want to sort of put the two together. Oh, I didn't think about this one. I'm such an idiot. I'm probably going to have to go with something that's recent because i got a memory like a sieve, so I'll probably say Josh Corburn's goal against Sheffield Wednesday. Cause, Great moment. Yeah, at that point, it was probably the most I've celebrated a goal in months because Boris' season sort of just, I mean, completely petered out and I think my thoughts towards the season got a little bit apathetic a bit. Um, so I'd say, yeah, Josh Corbyn's goal against Sheffield Wednesday, that was a good moment for him, and it was great to see the celebrations as well with him. Okay, I'm going to go with Marcus Brown's header against Bournemouth. Um, oh, right, yeah. yeah. But the only time in the season we've had fans in there, I think it was just a, a, a pretty sure one nil down, and uh, for him to, to score a header, but then also, you know, he, he's on his co- on the comeback trail, and I was like, ah, here we go. And Marcus mm. Brown's gonna Marcus Brown's gonna be <coughs> a passenger on the Morsey Express, and we're gonna go <laughs> for it. And uh, um, but yeah, I think that, uh, that was my moment of the season. I think I thought it was a it was a it was a cracking moment for him. Um, but then we'll go on to best game of the season. So who wants to go first? Tom, do you want to yeah, I mean th- this was gonna be the the Millwall game as well. So I'll go for a slightly different one and say four uh, one win over uh, Birmingham at St Andrews. Mm. Um, Casual wingy banger. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, it was it was a great game. I had a tweet go viral uh, shortly afterwards. You did, so. yeah, you did, <laughs> you did. See, yeah, stand oh, up, stand up. Was game. that the wrestling one? Yeah, okay. yeah. good tweet. L- love good tweet. the wrestling <laughs> meme, does Tom? <laughs> right, he <laughs> did, don't you? But yeah, great performance. I think I'm gonna probably echo that. But dinner. Oh, that's an easy choice. That one. Um, I'm gonna go for Bristol City away because at that point. That was, at that point, the best... Well, I still think that's the best uh, display of the season because I love those games where we have to really dig in deep and um, we really exploited Bristol City at the back and I think that was that was a game where I remember we did a live stream afterwards. I was buzzing and I haven't really been buzzing about Borough. I was <laughs> buzzing, man. <laughs> <laughs> the Borough the, buzz. The, I was the, buzzing. <laughs> the buzzing moments don't come around very often because I'm a miserable git, but... No, I, I think the Bristol City game, but I think Nottingham Forest away mm. as well. And that was good to see Yuri Ribeiro get absolutely rattled by Brit. Um, but yeah, Birmingham as well, Millwall. Millwall was a good half of a half. It wasn't yeah. a good game as a whole. Well, it wasn't the best game as a whole, but the th- I think 30 minutes of the first half was probably the best football I've seen. But yeah, I'll probably go the Bristol City game at uh, Ashton Gate. Mm, I feel like the Wickham... Uh, Wickham away was uh, imagine Wickham at home was an after performance of the season because <laughs> the season ended because um, <laughs> he didn't watch it he was yeah, watching ex- Derby yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think performance of the season the 4-1 to beat Karanka the way we did was, was quite nice 
Um, even though as much as I love Cranker, I think that it was it was good good to get one over him. Uh, and again, that Bristol City one was a great performance. Wickham was a good one. Uh, I'm going to go probably Birmingham. Yeah, I'll go Birmingham performance of the season. I think. The performance was excellent, and then after that, we shipped Lewis Wing on loan. Um, <laughs> shout out to Lewis Wing. Um, <laughs> so random. I know. And then uh, shout out uh, to Lewis. Shout Wing. out to Lewis Wing. Honestly, if if he relegated Derby yesterday, that would be amazing. I'm so sad that never happened. I know. My my loan pack is just crossed off. Oh, I don't like I, him anymore. I was thinking yesterday, like if, if he had done that and Rotherham stayed up, he's at least added another million or so onto his price tag if they wanted him. Mm. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we'll be looking for the last left one million he's going for then. Eh? I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <Good ash. laughs> I'm joking. Um, but there'll be people that are agreeing with that. I'm look. I'm, I'm waiting for the comments because we're a little bit behind on on uh, on the stream, so we won't be going on that. Um, but finally, um, my favourite question of the moment: What is your favourite Borough breakdown moment of this season? Uh, Dana, do you want to go first for this one? Yeah, I think hitting a hundred episodes was um, a big milestone for us, especially when you consider how it started in your bedroom with a blue snowball microphone. Yeah. Um, you know, we've we've come on leaps and bounds since then. I think it's been great to be a part of it so hitting 100 episodes was, was probably my highlight this season that was this season wasn't it it was this it season it feels like last yeah. season and this it season is fused together but yeah i think that's mine yeah and then tom you, you, Pro- you knew I mean, yeah you probably complete me january transfer to the podcast to be honest remember <laughs> uh getting the call i was in tesco's at the time yeah. You said, you fancy joining? I was like, I'll put me shopping down, I'll be right there. And you said, well, not for another couple of weeks, I'll put me shopping back up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's probably got to be that for me. Yeah, I think my highlight is probably Elliot leaving. <laughs> joking, <laughs> Elliot, I'm joking. I know you're listening. <laughs> it's Jimmy Lee's highlight. And <laughs> <laughs> no, I love you really, Elliot. Um, but favourite moment? Yeah, I think 100 episodes is great. You were joining Tom was great. I think a sad, the sad moment was uh, Elliot leaving as well. Um, and I also think I think the way the way we've been going for what two seasons now fully, um, pro- like two full seasons now is just great. And the way we've grown in such a short space of time, especially when the football's been absolutely dire as well. We've started at the back end of Pulis, had Gate, <laughs> and now Warnock, and people are still chewing in. I think that's it's it's a uh, commendable, and I think. Uh, I've been pretty much on most, but I think 100 episodes was, was very, very sweet indeed. And we're getting more ge- we're getting more guests on now, and I think that's pretty cool. Even though we've we've kind of grown it for like us, us three, and then we just want to supplement a couple of guests here and there. And I think that's been quite nice. So yeah, um, chatting to Dino was pretty cool as well. Uh, so we'll we'll put those in, and then that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for joining me and. Thank you for joining me for the whole season as well. And if you're listening to us um, on the podcast apps, thank you very much for, for joining us throughout the season. We've really uh, enjoyed you guys engaging with us. But then also, if all goes to plan next week, uh, we have one more podcast with a guest coming out. Um, and then we're going to take a very short break um, while we're you know, it's going to put our feet up and relax. And we've got a couple of projects that are going to come out over the summer as well. So hopefully uh, you'll be tuning into them as well. But that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in with us. Um, but if you want to leave us a review on the podcast apps and you know, give us a tweet or a message or anything like that, please do. We'd love to engage with you guys. But for now, this has been the Borough Breakdown Podcast. And that was all your match day chatter in a pod. See you next season. Want support. Curtis Fleming is down the edge of the air. Fleming 